December is finally here and you know what that means, Christmas, my favorite time of the year. So this December I am cooking up an entire feast just for you. I've got everything from appetizers to savory, sweet and desserts and even little canopies that you can serve at your dinner party right at home. Throughout this journey of culinary wonders, I have Abans supporting me with their Elba ovens, with their Mistral air fryer, Philips air fryers, uh, B&B bakeware and LG microwaves and uh, their Abans kitchen appliances which is helping me immensely throughout my culinary journey. You can follow me on my food adventures on Instagram at peckishme. And all these recipes that I'm doing here can be found on my website www.pekishmi.com. And this is homemade with Jai, Sisena Nayaka and Aban here with you. Christmas is just around the corner and today I'm going to show you how to do some of my favorite go-to Christmas recipes when it's time to entertain guests in the house. I'm going to start today with my favorite absolutely go-to chicken recipe which I'm going to do in my Elba oven. First, I need to marinate this chicken before I pop it in the oven. So I need to first make my rub and I'm going to make my rub in my trusty Aban's mixer grinder which comes with three parts, the spice grinder, the chutney maker and the blender which is ideal for all your juices. I'm going to use the spice grinder today because it's a small amount and I don't want to exert the big uh, appliances for that. So into the grinder I'm going to add garlic, plenty of garlic because the more garlic the better. Needs a lot of salt because it's an entire chicken we are talking about. And then pepper and then of course the butter. We are going to grind this all in my Abans mixer grinder. So what I'm now going to do is get this rub onto my chicken. I've washed the chicken, I've dried the chicken, I've patted it dry with paper towels so that the rub has plenty of uh, space and opportunity to interact with the chicken flesh itself. I've got a chicken with skin on because when roasting chicken I found that when skin is on it tends to have better moisture It overall tends to have better taste as well. And then I'm going to dig in with my fingers because I need to get under that skin, make a small tear in the skin and you put those garlic pieces and the mixture push it on under the skin so that you get everything all that flavor inside and while it roasts it will have more flavor get that mixture right inside the skin because you want all that flavor to seep into the flesh. So give it a nice massage. Make sure you cover every inch of that chicken. If you are getting difficulties um, 
putting the mixture onto on behind the skin you can always use a knife to just cut through the skin and just use your fingers to really get in there so now I'm going to leave this chicken here in the refrigerator for half an hour and let it marinate and get in all those flavors and absorb everything into that flesh. So while my chicken is marinating in the refrigerator, I'm going to cut my loaf of bread and prep the things for my oven bake. I want to cut off the head because I'm not only going to use the bottom part of the loaf. So this part, I'm just going to keep it in the middle of the baking tray. And now I'm going to slice the apples. I want nice little rounds because chicken and apples is one of my favorite combinations. Just going to take out the core. So what I'm now going to do is lay down these cut pieces of apple just randomly around the loaf because I want roasted apples to go with my chicken. Right, we are done. So the next step for me is to preheat the oven because my chicken has been marinating now for about half an hour. So I will just step back and go to my elbow and preheat it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the oven to the fan function and I need a temperature of around 200 degrees and I'm going to preheat my oven for about 15 minutes until it gets to that right temperature. Right, so my chicken is marinated nicely. I need to now roast it but before I roast it I need to tie the legs of the chicken together and also just sort of truss it, not quite truss it but give a semblance of trussing. I'm doing this because I want a chicken that's tidy otherwise it'll get splayed out on the oven and I don't want the flavor to be splayed out uh, if that is the case so I'm going to do the same to the arms as well the wings part of it tied knot is going to do the trick and looking all tied and neat so we are going to place them now on to the bread loaf. In this scenario what happens is while the chicken is getting nicely roasted in the oven the loaf is going to absorb all that beautiful juices and it's going to be a course in itself. I'm now going to pop this in the oven. So 200 degrees for about one hour in the fan function and then later on I'm going to turn it into the broiler function which will give it that nice beautiful roast on the outside. My chicken is ready so I'm just going to take it out of the oven. Mmm, that smell is amazing. Hot, 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 hot. Okay. We are done. Look at that. That beautiful char on the outside. And then you have the loaf of bread. It's looking moist already. I think it has soaked up all that wonderful juices and the apples are nicely mellowed out so this is still very hot I'm going to let the chicken rest for about one hour until it properly cools down so that I can lift it up and place it on this dish so this is my easy chicken on a loaf of bread with roasted apples and next up I have a dessert recipe for you so while I let this rest I'm going to get down right into the dessert I'm using locally made, locally grown guavas in this recipe. I'm going to show you how it's done using my Abans food processor.
So we are going to start off with making the puff pastry. Now when you say the puff pastry, a lot of people are going to get scared but I assure you it has nothing to be scared of. And I'm going to show you exactly why because I have my Abans food processor helping me along that journey of making the puff pastry. So now to make the puff pastry, I am going to integrate it all in the Abans food processor. I'm going to take the flour and put that all into the food processor. And then I'm going to throw in the butter. And also a pinch of brown sugar because it's a sweet pastry we are making. So now I'm going to pulse it all together. So this is the consistency that we are looking at. Soft but pliable and this needs to rest for at least 4 hours in the fridge before I can start boiling. So while my pastry is literally chilling in the fridge, I'm going to make the filling for the pastry. So for that I need to first chop up my guavas. I've gotten some semi-ripe guavas because that's the kind that I want. Now don't think that these pieces are a waste because what I usually do is I put it out onto the bird stand and birds love this kind of little seedy bits. So we have the cut guavas here. I'm just going to combine it with our brown sugar. Plenty of brown sugar because you need that sweetness. Guava is not very sweet. Therefore, all that. And I need cinnamon. I'm going to add plenty of cinnamon there. A pinch of salt. And also a generous squeeze of lime. I'm going to do a whole lime because I want that sourness to counteract against the sweetness. Make sure you coat each and every one of those pieces with the lime juice and the cinnamon and the sugar. Now we set this aside for a little while and I'm going to get to assembling my pastry. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to roll it out First, I need to put some flour onto the chopping board before I roll it out. And I am going to cut out a small portion of this. Just roll it out. It doesn't need to be very thin, it just needs to be of a pliable size because you need to fold that in to make the pastry. So I'm going to cut it with this circle here. I want perfect rounds. So now we fill this with our guava mixture. Take care not to let it go to the edges because you need to seal that in and you cover it with this. And you need to seal the edges, don't worry if the juice is going out, that's bound to happen. You're going to seal the edges with a fork. Place that aside. Just make sure those edges are sealed right in and you have this little gem over here.
So I've composed these little babies right here. So now this goes into the air fryer, 180 degrees, uh, for about 13 minutes until it gets nicely puffed up and the pastry is complete. Let me set that up. And I'm going to place two pastries because it needs space. In it goes. 15 minutes on the clock and we wait. Now my air fryer is extremely versatile. I do all kinds of things with it including frying up vegetables and french fries and even baking, you name it. Meats are absolutely amazing in this because you don't need any extra um, oil in it. You can even make pastries in it, you can make cakes in it and even frying up little vegetables. Um, like the brinjals or the caravilla for those little samples that we make. My puffs are ready. Let's see how it looks. Look at that. Wonderfully puffed up and it's golden in colour too and all within, what, 10 minutes? It took me, what, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes to whip up this lot. It was very quick and extremely effective as well. So there you have it. have a feast before you. We have the chicken here that I prepared earlier today and this is my guava puffs that I prepared in my Philips air fryer and this in itself is a feast that you can serve up to your Christmas guests, your New Year guests or all the celebrations that follow through. So you have an entire feast before you. You have the chicken, a meal in itself and then you have the dessert, the guava puffs. This actually can be served up as a snack as well. Let me dig into the chicken first. Slice through the breast. If you can see, cooked right through. Snip this. Tiny piece of that. I'm going to pair that with a bit of apple. Mm. The chicken is wonderfully moist with the apple. It adds that sweet and sour flavor to it. So you can see how moist it is. It's all the juices of the chicken and the seasonings that we added afterwards. This whole bread, chicken and apple combination is a meal in itself. You don't even need gravy to serve this chicken because it's wonderfully moist. Let me just dig into one of those guava pies. If you can hear the sound, that's the crustiness. I'm going to cut this in half and show you what it looks like inside. You see, the bits of guava are nicely moist and there's a wonderful sticky sugar syrup going on inside. But the rest of the pastry is very, very crusty. So I'm going to test this in taste. Guava puff is absolutely amazing in the fact that it's warm, it makes me feel fuzzy and comfortable and the tastes are just on point. It's not too sweet and that flavour of the guava comes right through and even though it has been cooked inside, it's not entirely mushy so it's, it gives a little bit of a crunch as well. Along with this, throughout the month of uh, December, I presented you with various dishes and various desserts, appetizers, mains that you can use during Christmas and even afterwards during your holidays. And these are recipes that you can prepare in a jiffy. And all in all, Abans has helped me with their kitchen appliances to bring these treats to you. And don't worry if you missed a single step, 
because you get all of these Christmas recipes on my blog www.pekishmi.com and if you follow me on Instagram I will be posting up recipes there as well so stay tuned this is Jainasi Sen Nayaka signing off from Homemade with Abans for today. Mm -hmm.